Hey, what's up everybody? Noah here for Adafruit, and we're coming at you with another DIY project. So about three months ago, Lamar Lady Ada emailed us saying, hey boys, it is time for Revenge of Pie Girl. So in this project, we're building a handheld gaming console. This time it's got 12 buttons, an analog joystick, stereo speakers, and a large five inch HDMI display. We're using, of course, the Raspberry Pi A Plus and RetroPie, so it's got full-blown emulation station. We call it Super Game Pie. So this is much bigger than our original DIY Game Boy. It's just got more games, bigger screen, sound, and of course, all the buttons. So to make your own Super Game Pie, you're gonna have to 3D print the enclosure, hack an SNES controller, and solder electronics. So you can pick up the Raspberry Pi and all the parts to build this project from the shop at Adafruit.com. You're also gonna need some hand tools and of course access to a 3D printer. But be sure to check out the full list of materials from the link in the description. All right, so the parts were designed specifically to print on most FDM desktop 3D printers, and it's available to download and modify if you wanna tweak them. Now these parts are rather large, so you're gonna need a printer with a big enough build volume. Here we're using the Lulzbot TAS4, which can crank out these parts, no problem. We do, of course, recommend using PLA material over something like ABS, just to minimize on the warping. And of course, these parts can be printed without any support material. Now, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, no problem, check out 3D Hubs or makexyz.com for a directory of local 3D printer operators. You basically just send your parts to a local maker who has a 3D printer and they'll print it out for you for some monies. You'll support the maker movement if you do, so be sure to check that out if you don't have a 3D printer. So to give a smooth finish to these parts, we're using some stuff from SmoothOn called XTC 3D Coating. This is basically an epoxy resin specifically made for coating 3D printed parts. The cool thing about this is it gives surfaces a shiny reflective finish, and it does a pretty good job at reducing ridges in the lines from these parts. So for the buttons, you're gonna have to take apart an SNES controller and saw the PCBs into three sections. I do, of course, recommend using a power tool like a Dremel, but please make sure to wear a mask and safety goggles. Also, be sure to do this in a well-ventilated area. And don't forget to clean up the dust. So to drive the display, we're using our Adafruit TFP401 display driver, which has onboard HDMI out, and we're just gonna connect this to the Pi. We're also going to use a 40 pin FPC socket extension, which is going to make everything fit nicely because we can extend it with this ribbon cable. For the audio setup, we're using our ST2012 2.8 watt Class D amplifier. This thing's pretty small, but it does have two audio channels, which is perfect for this project. And for the speakers themselves, we have these cool mini metal speakers in the shop, and we're just going to mount these to the enclosure by snapping them into place. The electronics are gonna be housed inside the 3D printed enclosure and panel mounted with machine screws. Definitely wanna check out the guide on the Adafruit learning system for a circuit diagram and a full tutorial. You get the link in the description. Now to interface the buttons with the Pi, I hacked up some jumper cables by removing the plastic covers and soldering the wires directly to the PCBs. Now the connect, these cool little connectors allow me to detach them easily from the GPIO header, especially when you're first building this project, it helps a lot. So to power this project, we're gonna use our PowerBoost 500C, which is a charging breakout. It allows you to recharge lithium polymer batteries with a simple micro USB cable. So we're using a rather large 6600 milliamp lithium polymer battery to power this project, which is gonna give us just about six hours of game time. So the wiring and the assembly of the whole circuit isn't too challenging, especially when you have a circuit diagram and a GPIO cheat sheet. We got all of the steps to build this project. They're documented in our learning guide, so you can follow along and you can make this project. Okay, so next up, we'll download and burn the RetroPie image to a micro SD card. You're gonna have to get your Pi hooked up to your Wi-Fi network. You can do this with a USB Wi-Fi adapter. And then we're gonna get the Adafruit Retro Game repo on GitHub. We'll then SSH into the Raspberry Pi and modify the retrogame.c file. Here we can map the buttons that are wired to the GPIO header to act like keyboard characters. But be sure to check out the guide on the Adafruit Learning System to get a full rundown on this section. So with everything assembled, built and tested, we now have a 3D printed DIY game pie. So guys, we want to know what you think about this build. You can let us know in the comments below. If you have any suggestions or questions, you can drop us a line in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this project, please let us know and share it with your friends and inner circles. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe for more 3D printed projects. We do this thing every week. But until then, there you guys have it. I'll see you guys next week. Remember to make, share, repeat. Bye, everybody. I'm going to go play this thing. <laughs>